I want to make an ingrain cutting board, but I don't have a planer. So here's how to make an ingrain cutting board without a planer. Let's start the process by cutting the boards to size with the compound miter saw. Score the boards first before you plunge in to help prevent tear out. Then use the first board you cut to line up the next cut to your laser. If you don't have a laser, eh, I guess a pencil will work. Then bring your cut boards over to your jointer and start jointing without checking your fence. At least it was just one board. Check your fence and adjust it to square, then joint away. When picking which side to joint, I like to choose the concave side. It gives me two points that rest on the joiner bed so the board won't rock. The joiner will flatten almost anything, so don't spend too much time deciding. Don't run the board through too fast to prevent sniping. This cut determines the width of your ingrain squares. I'm going for an inch. Your mileage may vary. Make sure you measure twice and cut once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have a planer, you can skip this step and go straight to gluing. I don't have a planer, so I'll rip the strips to size. One side needs jointed to flatten the edge that rides against the table saw fence. This time check your joiner fence and joint one strip. Check that it's square and joint the rest. After I'm done jointing each strip, I like to put the jointed side up against my table saw fence to make it easier when I start ripping. Now just take some time to admire the wood chips you just created. That's enough admiration. Put the jointed side against the fence and rip away. After the boards are ripped, it's time to enjoy a glue up time lapse. That was fun. We should do that more often. Now it's back to reality. Because the glue dried, it's time to ruin a chisel. Run your panels through a planer or a drum sander next. Or sand them flat. You know, whichever. After you're done listening to a Joe Rogan podcast, check to see how flat the panel is. Take a straight edge and a light and check the whole board like so. Your goal is to find the high spots and sand them down so when you check with your light and a straight edge, you see a more even amount of light peeking through. So now that your back is feeling great, look for all the gaps and blemishes to fill in with wood putty. To make the wood putty, start sanding your panels and holy sh! that's a lot of sanding. Much better. Empty your sander bag and put it into a container. Vacuum the panel to remove the rest of the dust. Don't mix all the sawdust with the glue. The putty dries really quick, so work with small amounts at a time. Fill in the blemishes with putty. Scrape off as much excess as you can to make sanding easier. Rinse and repeat.
the ingrain sides are going to be uneven, so square one of the ingrain sides to one of the edge grain sides. To do that, use a carpenter square and draw a line above an ingrain side like this. Then flip the square and draw another line. These lines should be close to parallel. If they're not, pick the line that's most square to the middle glue joint of the panel and use its edge grain side to put against the miter gauge. This will be the reference side. It's hard to see the pencil mark in this clip, but trust me, it's right there in the middle. I'm going to lower the blade almost into the table with the reference side mark to put it against the miter gauge. Then put one edge grain side against the saw blade and the other side against the fence. Make a note of where the fence is. Drop the saw blade into the table and move the fence over a little bit. I like to use a heavy weight on the panel near the saw blade. It helps to make a smoother cut. This is just a big transformer. This next cut determines the thickness of the cutting board. I'm going to set mine to an inch in 730 seconds, because why not? Just keep cutting until there's nothing left to cut. I like to put the clamps against the table saw fence to help keep the panel square. Square the clamps to the fence and put on some paste wax to make the glue easy to remove off the clamp rails. Some of the gaps are too deep to fill with putty, so I'm going to fill them in with glue. Start by covering the side with tape and then drop the cutting board so you create a little gouge in the tape. Make some watery glue, then use a syringe to suck up the glue and fill in the gaps. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper here. Make sure to practice on the side of a piece of scrap to get a feel for sanding like this. Otherwise, the sander has a tendency to round over the sides. When in doubt, lighten up the sanding force and let the sander do the work. Also, try to pick up the sander on the ends to prevent taking off too much material, or lighten up the force at the end of the cutting board. Now for the first of the two parts that everyone's waiting on. You wet the surface to raise the grain a bit. After it's dry, you sand the grain down to give it a smoother surface. On the left side here, I sand it with 180 grit sandpaper. You get a better look at how much the water raises the grain. I'm going for a slight chamfered edge. Personal preference, of course. I like a simple, clean, sharp look.
After the edge has been decided, it's time to router in some handle grooves. These cutting boards are going to be used on both sides, so I don't want to screw in feet. These grooves will make them a little easier to pick up on a countertop. Just a little sanding to smooth them out after routing. And now for what you watch the entire video, or skip to the end to see. The oiling. I had a lot of fun making these cutting boards. I actually gave my mom one for Mother's Day and my wife and I are keeping the other one. If you've never used a wooden cutting board like this, I highly recommend it. It's a different experience than a plastic or bamboo. I cut some peppers and an onion on it and the, uh, the feedback that you get from an ingrained cutting board is so nice. I never thought I'd say that, but you know, it's true. It makes the mundane task of, of food prep, you know, just a little bit nicer. If you ever get a chance to use an ingrained cutting board like this, you should. Uh, more importantly, if you ever get a chance to make an ingrained cutting board, you definitely should. It's a very rewarding experience to go from the lumber store to your, your kitchen countertop with, you know, food on it. Mahogany is a, uh, it's a really nice wood to work with too. Better than oak and walnut in my opinion, but, you know, walnut by far looks the best. If you're looking for something a little different, definitely give mahogany a try. Seriously, thank you so much for watching this. Uh, be sure to leave a comment and let me know what you think. I'm going to be posting more woodworking videos in the near future, so subscribe and hit the bell icon so YouTube will let you know whenever a video is out. See you later.